Mission to start. Thank you. Shotgun. Everybody, welcome back to Video Game Esoteric and the final episode in our Metal Slug Mania retrospective series, and we are ending it on Metal Slug 3D. I actually didn't plan on making this, but so many people said they were looking forward to the episode on it, I figured, why not? Because I never really considered this part of the mainline franchise, but it exists, so why not take a look at it? Before you get too far involved, though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like, subscribe, that notification bell definitely helps us out. If you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. Marco's a member, are you? But honestly, for such a cartoony nature of a cutscene, there's a lot of blood and violence in this game. It's really kind of like playing Team Innocent World Police except as a video game. Now I'm not going to blow smoke up your you know what and say this is a good game. It is not. It's an interesting experiment and it definitely has a lot of charm. The heart is in the right place for this game, but in an execution, it is nowhere near the 2D Metal Slug games in fun or kind of fluidity. But right off the top here, it kind of looks like Metal Slug. You You've got the same announcer, you've got a lot of the same sound effects, but this game just doesn't really work in 3D. There is a lock-on mechanic, and I'll show you shortly, but I just kind of like felt like running around and shooting. Things are just strange in this game. It feels unfinished, or maybe like they just kind of gave up midstream, because you have these trucks just sitting here, and you need to blow them up to move on, but nothing really attacks you out of them. And then within the first 30 seconds of the game, you get to this little area here, and you're just locked off. You can't move forward. This is a terrible design decision in any game, in my opinion, making you fight these little arenas. But right here, this dude, if you run out of grenades, you can't hit him. You cannot shoot through the red wall, but for some strange reason, you can throw a grenade through it. It is really an odd design decision. If you don't jump and throw that grenade up the hill, you're not going to move on with the game, and that's in the first minute. The design choices in this title just don't make much sense, and I feel like that's because even though none of the team that made the 2D Metal Slugs, either at SNK or when Noise Factory took over, none of them are involved in this game. So you can tell it's kind of people working in 3D that maybe weren't that comfortable with designing, you know, an action platform run and gun game in the third dimension. Now, I don't want to be horribly negative about it because there is some fun to be had here and not just from a, hey, it's a Metal Slug game, let's talk about it standpoint. The presentation is nice. The graphics for PlayStation 2 are decent and they did a good job of bringing over a lot of the textures and models into 3D. The game still has a lot of the charm of a Metal Slug title. It just doesn't have any of the gameplay, which was 99% of the reason everyone enjoyed that franchise in the first place. Sure, the charm and personality was a huge added bonus on top, but at the core, the gameplay was absolutely outstanding. And I don't know what Marco's doing here. He won and he looks like he's in Saturday Night Fever. But moving on to the next stage, we get into more of an urban environment. And I'll tell you, this game is called Metal Slug, and they screwed up all of the driving mechanics for the slugs. Aiming is extremely difficult, even with the lock-on. The controls are abysmal, and then the camera just fights you every step of the way. It's highly unfortunate a game called Metal Slug screwed up the slug mechanics. Because what is the camera doing there? It's just staring at the ground. It's not aiming at anything. It's easier just to jump out of the slug and attack those tanks on foot than it is to have anything to do with actually trying to pilot the slugs, in my opinion. Maybe I'm just doing it wrong, but honestly, that camera is just a disaster through and through. When you get into some of the smaller areas, though, you get that lock on on, there's a bunch of projectiles flying around like this. It starts getting towards like maybe the 10% of what you remember a 2D Metal Slug title being. There are fits and bursts of fun to be had here, but then again you run into this office building and you're just stuck behind this red wall that you can't pass, and now you can shoot past the red wall. Couldn't do it earlier, can do it now. The game's mechanics are not consistent. Can't shoot through the red wall to hit that tank, have to throw grenades. If you run out of grenades, I really honestly don't know what you do. But I will say one of the positives of this game is it does have a good soundtrack. It's got that going for it. So go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds and I'll come back and talk more about the final video in the Metro Slug retrospective. But enjoy.
So yeah, the soundtrack's decent and the sound effects are good, but as you get onto the boss of this area, you're going to see where this game just does not work in 3D. Targeting that rocket launcher works perfect, but we have a helicopter flying above us and we can't really lock onto it. No matter how we turn the camera, it's just difficult. If I jump and hit the lock on targeting, finally I do get it. But again, because that helicopter is in the sky, if we move in the wrong place, the camera just goes wild and we're now just shooting it basically nothing. And this was the issue with 3D games back in the PlayStation 1 and more specifically PlayStation 2 era. They felt like they had to make everything 3D when a franchise was in 2D. Things like Metal Slug in 3D just don't really work. Things like Castlevania on the PlayStation 2, still fun experiences, but don't hold a candle to the 2D versions. And then you just get this really weird chibi looking art. I like it, it's got personality, but it also doesn't really totally feel like a Metal Slug game either but of course it is using a lot of environments as far as the concepts are concerned and now we're in what looks like the middle east or morocco and the game gets a little bit more fun here you've got that hot air balloon in the sky floating around this game can be fun. I'm not saying it's a bad game whatsoever. I'm just saying that Metal Slug never needed to be 3D and a lot of the things that make you love the franchise in the first place just don't work in the third dimension. Because with that lock-on mechanic in this tank here, as long as you strafe left and right, the tank will never even really shoot at you. It's only when you stop moving will it send a projectile out, which means as long as you keep moving left and right, you're basically invulnerable to being attacked by that and things like this here we can't move on until we destroy this truck but the guy's just sitting in it doing absolutely nothing is he supposed to be shooting is the game's you know coding having a little bit of an issue i don't know but again here comes another slug and this one drives even worse than the first one and that's what's really disappointing is that everything that you would love about getting in a vehicle in metal slug is ruined in metal slug 3d I can't really shoot the direction I want to. Those laser projectiles, whatever you want to call them, are going right over the tank's head. And I just get turned around here and can't even manage to get the tank pointing in the direction I want. So screw it. Let's just jump out and shoot these tanks and throw some grenades at them. It works a lot easier. It keeps the flow going. Honestly, if I see a slug in this game and you don't have to use it as a requirement, I just don't whatsoever. Well, there's a little bit of slowdown, but it's a Metal Slug game. We're used to that by now. But there's still gas out here, like we're using the slug, but I gave up on it probably a minute ago. And again, we're just cordoned off in this area, and we can't do anything until we wait for these tanks to come through to shoot them. A lot of the time, you're just waiting for things to come to you until you can attack them, because in this instance, you can't shoot through the Red Veil. Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. It makes no sense. The game does its best right here when you're on foot and you're just shooting other enemies in these small corridor areas. When the camera is cooperating, it is a ton of fun. When it's not, it makes the game almost unplayable. And that's the problem with this era of 3D, is that if people weren't super comfortable with it, you just ended up with worse experiences overall. But of course, it's a Metal Slug game, so there is fun to be had, and the charm factor is still here. You can definitely tell that nobody from the original development team worked on this game, but enough people had care and love for the franchise that they wanted to make it good. But again, blind camera, blind corner, run into some landmines and just take some hits. And then there's just weird things here. You walk through this door, it's a checkpoint, you get this very basic screen, and you come back out to the same area that you were in before, and the game doesn't even choreograph what you're supposed to do. So this is a weird episode to end the Metal Slug retrospective on. It's been a ton of fun talking about all of these games. It's a bummer that we end with 3D, but that's kind of how it goes. Short of that, if you want to play this game, check it out. It's definitely not worth the money it commands, so you want to find another way to play it. But yeah, they ruined the slug mechanic in Metal Slug. That's uh, not good. Otherwise, thanks so much for watching this retrospective, and we'll see you guys next time. Boo. Bye-bye.